wanted to be is settled in one place. I just was tired of seeing it because I had met so many good people too. I didn't want to say goodbye to anybody again. If they were going to move away from me, that's one thing. But I didn't want to move away. I didn't want to make friends and leave again. I didn't just didn't want to do that anymore. I wanted to be in one spot. It took me a couple of years to get settled down, but but once I got here and I took uh, it took about five. We were in this house because when I moved in, I told Tina we weren't going to stay here. We were going to move, and uh -huh. and she wasn't because she don't really like the neighborhood around here that yeah. much, you know. But so. Uh, but after about five years, I told her, you know, I like it. I'll build a room on the back. This is it. I don't want to move again. I'm gonna. And when my folks, like I, my, the ashes from my dad are buried in the backyard, and the ashes from my mom are buried in the backyard, because I just made a conscious decision to stay here, to be settled, uh, and. Originally, my intent was I was saying, you know, I bummed around the world and I really liked it, but I'm going to try being settled and well, I'll give it 20 years and then, then I can decide what's wrong by the time 20 years is up. I really liked it. I just do. And uh, it's not, I mean, it kind of surprises me that I don't really like to travel, but it, it, I, it's just, I just like it here so much. The same thing when, to, my son is going to uh, retire. He, he's now he's in the reserves, and he'll uh, he's got about two more. He called me like a year ago. He had three. So I got three years to go to my retirement, Dad. But I want you. I I, I want you to promise me you're going to come to Louisiana for my retirement. So I'm, yeah, sure. You know I'll do that. But and I will. But for my son, yeah. <laughs> and for these guys that travel and meet meet up with them. But we did it, and I, I just, I think, well, you know, I would love for them, for them to come here. Uh -huh. I would love for them to come here. I just, uh, I mean, I could travel. It's not that, yeah. I mean, I can do it, but, but the truth is, um, just I don't want to. I just, I'm just, I, I, that's it. You know, when uh, I worked, my, my, my goal originally was I uh, to satisfy want to be happy in my situation well I am I mean I I like it here I this is so this is so cool to me to uh, to to that I live in southeast Fresno but then I but I have these books I have I mean I have TV it's I have everything I can't imagine what what you want I scored some great dope you know <laughs> Money. Can't this ask is, for much else. And if you do ask for much else, then that happiness level, of, at least in my estimation, and what I've noticed in my life is that you, you doesn't make it doesn't make you any happier. When you add more things to your life, no, you yeah, your happiness no. goes down. So, I mean, I and I I came to that conclusion a long time. I, I mean, I I thought, what would it take to be happy? All right, if I had if I had good food, a nice roof. Uh, a comfy house, a good bed, uh, a nice garden. What, what, what more would I want? Well, the truth is, I don't want any more. It was, it's, it did work it's, out. It's satisfying. It's, it, like, it's satisfying. Weight off your shoulders. And, and exactly then. So I, I, when I'm here, I can just be happy. When I'm traveling, you know, I, it's new and everything, but. But it's a little bit of effort. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is so cool. Anyway, anyway, I'm one of those guys to know because I came out immediately when they said that I couldn't. And it was the last day that we were all together, and they're all sitting there, and I, and I just like tongue tied. I couldn't, I couldn't say, "Hey, I don't want to see you anymore," because that's not true. I do, yeah. you know, I do. But uh, anyway, you you ready to do this? Yeah, let's okay. do it. Okay. Let me, uh, okay. Americans were. English speaking white, I mean the ones, the, 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 the revolution in thought that starts with, with Hume or, or in 15th century England, 16th century England, when you, you get the first, first thought that everybody's equal, that 
They, and it, it, when they were writing, it was rich guys, rich men, writing for other rich men. And when they're talking about equality of, of all, uh, they're really talking about among men. But still, it's, a, it's the idea for the first time that, hey, you, you can't be born a king or you can't be born a, a serf. That's not the way it is. As a baby, as a person, you're, you're equal and, and you have certain rights. And that's really a revolutionary concept. I mean, that, that you're not born to be the king or you're not born to be the... You're, you're in the position that you're in because that's the way it is and that's who you are. Uh, that once the idea gets out, um, intellectually you can say it, but initially, like when they so oh yeah 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 everybody's equal. So how are we going to do that? Well, I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll, we'll write up the rules, but because we the rich and it was the rich white guys are writing up the rules, we'll make it like yeah it's yeah everybody's equal, but uh, the ones where the money have are more equal. And, and so we don't have a democracy in America, we have a republic, and a republic is where the people with the money have more power than the ones without the money. That's, that, that's, so we have uh, the original Senate, so every, everybody gets equal representation, we'll have a House of Representatives, but uh, we won't let them, won't be a, a, a one house, a one governing body will make two governing bodies, a House and a Senate, and the House will be representative of every, every equal representation. So many people, you get to send a representative. So many people, you get to representative. But the Senate will say that first it has to be a man, it has to be a rich man. That was property. That And and then and every state, no matter how many people you have, you get two senators, regardless of the size of your state. And that's how, we, so that the rich guys will really still be able to have, they have a big break, they have a control. It's not a, it's not a democracy where everybody gets a vote, it's a republic. What do rich guys get the, the vote? Yeah, they're still elected among the rich guys, but it, it was limited initially. You had to be a man and you had to be rich to, 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 to be in the Senate. Then, all right, well, do away with the, uh, with the, you, you don't have to be rich, but, but, but you do, because who can run for Senate if you're not rich, you know? Uh, so every, anybody could, any man could run, well, any white guy, mm -hmm. any white guy, and then it, it can add women. And but many, many people in America, especially if you're white, uh, and 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 have no sense that 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 that's a species concept that you're not white, you're just a person, but you believe you're white, and it's the and when we say everybody's equal, what we really mean is Every American, when we say every American, we mean white people. And uh, they, people won't use Cartesian common sense. That is, they won't look at the facts because you already know. You, you don't have to ask about or think about what, what's real or what, what, whether it's right. Or, we don't have to raise the question of does America have a right to intervene anywhere around the world anytime at all? We we'll just assume that, and we won't question that. We won't question it because, well, we're Americans. We 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 believe in truth and justice and freedom. And if you don't like it, fuck you. And, and you mean fuck you. And that's right. I think if things weren't so easy here and things were in chaos, like we are, like we're falling into chaos. Like we're falling into now, but yeah. For shoot the piss. Yeah. This is uh, about. You know, early 1900s, Americans, the United States has been pretty well off, you know, not too oh, many yeah. issues, pretty stable, and that's why I think a lot of things, a lot of uh, issues that shouldn't be get, shouldn't have got, been gotten away with, are getting away with, because people are happy. We don't have any reason, I mean, no, no, that's not absolutely. everybody, but the, hey. the majority of people are, eh, you know, if that's happening over there, it's not affecting me. But when it starts No consideration of the fact that what's happening over there is... Is is effect. We, we're, we're in effect, we're paying for the guns. If we're not actually pulling the trigger, we're, we're yeah. putting the arms. We're, we, uh, we think it's, well, it's like Vasco da Gama. I mean, when he got to India for the first time, 
uh, it's, it was like the the Vikings hitting England for the first time in 800. Hey, oh, come on, man, we're just, not that uh, this is right or anything like that. We got the fucking swords. We'll take over, and they give us a big part of England, and they then and here's Vasco da Gama. Uh, he, what right? What to to come up on a ship of 300 people and for no fucking reason except for the money I mean the fact that well, they were they were Muslims burn them to the ground and then get to the coast of, of India and just and uh, say you know what I'm gonna take we'll, we'll, we'll uh, go uh, we'll just we'll establish a little Portuguese uh, trading post right here on the coast and if you don't like it you know what we'll just take random people off chop them up throw them in, and say make a curry of them and fuck you because we're doing this so, from the standpoint of people back in Portugal, or from the standpoint of Americans here, when we start the Spanish-American War and take over uh, Puerto Rico and uh, the Philippines, for instance, take over control, for the people who, in America, who are eating good and stuff, it's great. But if you were one of the Puerto Ricans, or if you were one of the Filipinos who uh, didn't think that you should give up control of your land. Pow! You're a dead son of a bitch, and it's not so good for you, you know. But and we don't have to question that, and because, like you say, I mean, Amy, everything's fine with us, and we're Americans. Not only is everything fine with us, but we believe that uh, we believe in democracy. Well, we don't. We're a republic, not a re democracy, even so. And and at the time when we we're doing that. Uh, only white guys could vote, not women. That wasn't until 1912, something like that, and not, uh, and not. Although the Emancipation Project, the, the actual voting was really until the, the Civil Rights Act in the in the 1950s. Did so you have to have own land or something. Oh yeah, no, no, that was a, that was the original. That that everybody could vote for the House of Representatives. That's to satisfy the. Uh, Jefferson crew who believed in uh, the universal rights and, and uh, liberty for all and justice for all, uh, that's democracy. But to get, because most of the people at the Continental Congress, though, when they were writing up the Declaration of Independence, when they deciding to go, they were rich landowners, almost all of them, or rich businessmen like uh, 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 who's uh, Ben Franklin, who was a printer and stuff, but an, an established business. These, these were the establishment, the, and some of them were saying, "Yes, yes, the idea of freedom for all, freedom for all, justice." That's, that's a. This is what this is the age of reason that we're in now. Other ones were saying, "Yeah, yeah, 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 sure, but you can't just trust the mob to run things like this. Uh, the responsible people, the one who own the property, they're the ones who've got to really." stay in control, well, yeah, well, then we'll have, uh, uh, you still uh, elect, but you can only, only white guys with money get to run, and and they're the only ones who vote, too. But you say white guys without money get to vote, but they only get to vote for the white guys, so, white guys with money. Yeah. And, I mean, that's still the situation, all that, the House of, uh, it's, it's hard to think that, because it's morphed over to the House now, because money controls everything, but that the people in the Senate who the average income the average income is like two million dollars that's of everybody in the Senate well they have nothing to do with me and you they don't, have, they don't they don't know what it is to to pay the bills to you know it's it's and anyway we, we're we're so the the trouble is if if the if the vote is Legitimate in this will be a real turning point in and and a change of ethos in America that there's a real chance of of electing somebody who's uh, in order to pay for universal health care in order to pay for uh, universal education in order to uh, uh, pay for homeless house for for uh, getting crazy people off the streets and back into uh, uh, some kind of housing, some kind of control for for uh, the homeless people who are nuts who, you know... It's, so, so would that be 
we need to cut uh, we need to to establish all of that we would need to cut the uh, defense spending we, yeah. we'd have to uh, we need to change your currency and, and any, anytime someone says you know, I mean it's obvious that the majority of the expenditures in the budget goes towards defense spending <laughs> and and there's there's so many people that that hooray that and they, they think that's a great idea we should be the strongest I mean for, yeah. by all measures we, we already are, ten, we are. And, and if you have the the newest technology and the, the most bombs the most planes the most aircraft carriers the most nukes I, I mean what kind of what kind of who's going to attack us need? yeah no exa hey we could if if defense if defense is what we're doing and not involving ourselves in in and other offense. people's business and, and if we're not going around and chopping the heads off the the samurai so that we can show them that hey we're in charge here if we're not in exposing our will in the Middle East to control the oil whatever if we if we were legitimately involved in self defense well we have enough bombs to blow the fuck out of anybody else in the whole world and we could look to uh, the national defense system of Switzerland for instance whereas everybody has to be part of the military and you have do you wear like this is for a 20 year period that every once a month uh, once a year for a month reservist. you have to yeah go and be a reservist and they they control you know Switzerland who's going to attack Switzerland etc. Well, one reason nobody's going to attack Switzerland is because they've had a national guard for, for a few hundred years I mean they Everybody has to serve. Everybody has, and there's no reason we couldn't do that. We could line the borders. We could, we could uh, put a man every or a woman every 15 feet from from the Pacific Ocean to the Atlantic Ocean, and down both coasts and all along the border of Mexico and all along. We can line it up. We can. There's, we have plenty of. You know, it's when they say defense spending, that's all bullshit. That's aggressive spending. It's not defense. And we could. It's a possibility that maybe because Trump is so bad that people will react and because when when they react they'll think hey we need you know, there's no reason we can't have a college for everybody. if you want to go to college if you want to learn if you want to learn to be a doctor or if you want to learn to be a truck mechanic you know, if you're willing to go to school we we'll, we'll cover that we think education is good and if you um, uh, if you're sick you should be able to go to a doctor. That's just that you know. There's no reason. We're the richest country in the world. Certainly, we can afford that. Mm -hmm. That would never happen under Trump. And what I'm afraid of is they, you know, they're just talking about that the Russians have gone in and while we're not looking, in effect, uh, uh, snuck into the computers of all kinds of of of, uh, of uh, some of the atomic. Uh, 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 no, the miss the 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 uh, generating plants, the atomic generating plants, oh, okay. and, and uh, the electrical grid systems. Apparently, Russia might be able to shut down anytime they want. Anytime they want. Well, that's serious business. But if they could do that, how do we know that the election this November? That that's my real worry here, because I think if it's a free election, Trump's going to be out. Not, not, but the 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 House and the Senate will probably shift from being Republican control to uh, dem the people who would not support Trump, who would put the brakes on, who would actually investigate his. Re and we can have that real might be a real change in consciousness in America. Who knows where that's going to go from there? But that has to happen, and I think maybe one of the reasons Trump is so confident is because. His friend Putin is told him, "Don't worry, we got your election covered, bud. You're still in." Uh, they they think that the, you know it's everybody's just all this role of people are going on, and every time they have a special election now, a Democrat won where a Republican before now they 20 points up, and Trump beat them so bad just a couple of years ago, and now it's turned everybody switching around. And hey, it looks like uh, Trump is going to lose his support, all of his support in the and that will be a major change, but suppose he doesn't, and how would you know if you're voting on an electronic machine, and if the Russians can control 
the power grid system and they got out and apparently they already they, there was a memo put out by the the homeland security just a couple of weeks ago that yeah hey got to be careful because russia does have they can do this they were already into the computer over here and over there and over there well fuck if they can do that what? can they control the election oh, yeah. can they say how do you how would Isn't you know so it's real weird, weird times for me, you know. But didn't Putin just get reelected right now? Oh yeah, yeah. But he, or, you know, it, it, be, be, he's what Trump wants to be. Oh yeah. He, uh, the guy who was running against him, got thrown in jail uh, a couple of months ago. So he's so that's the opposition. And then uh, there's no if you. I mean, he got reelected, but there was no. It's not. It's, it's, the, not like it's the election that we might have in November if we're not careful. That it doesn't matter if you think your vote, who you're voting for, you, your vote doesn't count because Putin's in and Putin's staying. And I'm afraid, you know, maybe Trump, they just said a couple of months ago, said, ah, I'd like to be president for life. I bet the motherfucker would too, you know. And, and if it meant cheating and lying, well, he don't have no morals. There's no, no reason why he wouldn't. And so could it, could it happen? Gee. Maybe so. I don't know. This is. I got hope. You know, it don't cost me nothing. That's what I say in a letter. You I, got hope. I got hope because. Uh, I think I lost hope. Oh well, no. I it's, don't have hope. And and it's not even. With, <laughs> it's not even. With, okay, let's say we change a president. Oh, we might still be. It, would, it wouldn't matter who's in that spot. It doesn't matter who's in that spot. First off, first off, whatever they say, I mean, unless. I don't know anybody who would run for president, or that w would actually run for president. I don't know them personally. So whatever they're saying is probably bullshit anyway. Probably just to get in. Yeah. Maybe a little bit of it, they believe in it, but to get to that point, you've most likely had to do something corrupt to get there. Well, maybe. Although, there's yeah. Bernie, for instance, there's Bernie. Bernie yeah, Sanders. But even, even, who, who? even Bernie Sanders, if he were to become president, then that would just be a four or eight year stall. Because... Then, then hey. the, the people, it, it just keeps, <laughs> it. you just keep stalling back and forth until you get to a point where now you've got Trump as president, you have a Republican Senate, you have a Republican uh, majority. Okay, that's when things start working until, let's say, in November, boom, now you've got a Democratic Senate, so uh, now you're at a stalemate until Trump gets elected or gets, you know, ousted, and, and then you have de Democrat in, well, then they're going to have. You might have a Democratic Senate for the first term, and then now it becomes Republican, and nothing gets done. Which is a better, almost a better idea, in my opinion, than someone that can just move forward with whatever they want. And healthcare spending and, and military spending, the richest people in the country, or probably in the world, that's where they make all their money. They're never going to give that up unless. We make them. Unless we make them. And to make them would be, it would be a coup. We're talking about a change in consciousness in America. I think it's more than a change in consciousness. Well, even, even if everybody in America believed, if the people that are in charge, not even saying government, the people that are in charge of everything, the, the military and healthcare, healthcare maybe, but the military for sure, they make hundreds of billions of dollars. Oh, the they do. They do. If they even get a whiff of, oh, things are changing, things are Let's not turn into a, a dictatorship here. Just like that. Coup, military will take over, well, well, and that's it. I, he, I don't think he, anything he, would ever, unless we get into a world war and we get beat, that's the only way I can see something happening where we, you know... Change our consciousness. Change our consciousness. Change the way we do business. Because <laughs> it's a boot, boot on the neck. You know, it's possible. But... There, my hope is, I mean, you like I say, you can hope. Nothing doesn't cost you nothing to hope. And if you look, if you stand back, and the times we're in right now seem really dire to me. This is, everybody should be having a lot of people. Uh -huh. This is a life that people could strive for. Um, regular, regular food, medical, medical care. Uh, you know, it doesn't take that much to be happy. Most Americans, most people, Never stop to think about what they want to be happy. They're talking about they want more. They, they want gone. more. They want to say, well, it's our whole society, this consumer society. That's what everything is built on. You gotta have, but 
but we could have a change of consciousness and if you just even though I think it's really dire right now and this guy's really scared of me and 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 generally the general populace Did seems to be stupid. you feel the same stupid. way when Bush got in office? Or is this different? Oh, uh, well, yeah, I, I felt this since, since 1972 when I came back and we, and the, that was way before your time, but that was Vietnam, the war was going full strong and uh, the uh, candidate, the Democratic Party, that Nixon, now Nixon was up for his second term election. He had been elected in 68 and he had pushed the war in Vietnam real heavily, 68, 69, 70, 71, but he was also a crook and it was just in the paper. So his opponent was George McGovern who said, let's stop this bullshit. Let's get out of this war. This is wrong. We're going to stop it right now. And I thought that it was so logical and so right and so what we were doing was so wrong that there was no there was no doubt in my mind that McGovern was going to win the election and Nixon would be out and America would be set on the path of of the right foot that we wouldn't well Americans elected Nixon and uh, McGovern lost by the biggest margin ever well, of 50 states McGovern won like so was there Nixon. a lot of like uh... Red Scare and a communist talk during that election was that? Do you think that's kind of the reason why he won, especially by such I, a large margin? I I can't explain it. I mean, yeah, it, it it comes down to no no real debate in America among the the newspapers, among the people who said opinion. There was no. There was no Fox News at that time, anything like that. It was all there was just like three major, you know, uh, ABC, NBC, CBS, and but nobody. The the question of does America have the right to intervene or to to judge and execute anywhere in the world? Do we have that right? That was never up for debate. It's the the whole debate was. Uh, Defense of communism. If we don't hold Vietnam, it'd be a domino effect. Communism will take over the world. What the fuck? Let them take over the world. You know, but n nobody said what. It's just that was it. We're fighting communism. They're the evil. We're the good. The, they're the bad. We're the right. It's it's the the forces of um, justice and democracy against evil communism. The good against the bad. We can't give up. We got to go in there. We're dedicated. Well, let's go then. Kill everybody. That's apparently. I mean, to me, it's it's. You know, I had. I, I was a Republican supporter of the of the, our right to go in and do that and stuff. I went. I lost my mind. I went to South America for a couple of years. I came back and I thought, man, this is obvious. We're wrong. If you used any Cartesian. Mm -hmm. I mean, what he says is a uh, Cartesian uh, uh, sense, a uh, common sense. It's just you look at the facts. Well, the facts are we're uh, dropping napalm bombs on women and children over there for uh, the stop communism or something. I don't know why. Look at the facts, and uh, and. With an open mind, don't don't have don't don't say no. That can't be. Don't we're 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 democracy, so there's no. I can't look at those facts. No, you look at your mind with an open facts, and then uh, follow it all the way to the logical conclusion. Well, we're wrong. We shouldn't be doing this. This is so simple to me, and yet, and, and I really thought that McGovern was going to win the. I mean, I was I was sure when I got out of I got out of work at three o'clock in the afternoon to go vote. And when I got out of work at three o'clock in the afternoon, Nixon had already won. Um, my vote was, in effect, worthless by the longest land, by the biggest landslide ever in American history. Well, we think that's okay, and we did then. 
and the Vietnam War ended, but we don't say we were wrong or anything like that. I mean, even though we got ass beat, we got we lost everything. We spent billions of dollars. We we got nothing. They turned into a communist state, and you know, and, and the domino effect actually didn't happen, I guess, after all. So, what what was it all about? We don't question that. So we don't, we don't look at that. We go on. We. So what was the main goal in the Vietnam War? Probably defense spending. Contracts, well, people making money, or, or well, I'm were, sure. were, there, were there resources? I'm in, sure. Were there resources in Vietnam it, it, that we could have gone for? Is that kind of the idea? Or, I, I don't, I don't buy. I don't think so. Thing. So you think it was just no, no, I spurring well, the yeah. economy, spurring the economy. Type the, thing? Oh, gee, you know what, what is a reasonable explanation for this? It's uh, 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 basically it's. The Vasco da Gama thing, it's might makes right. If you are the white guys who set up America, well, okay, first, uh, only real Americans count. So if you were a Cherokee or Creek Indian and you owned vast territory in North Carolina and South Carolina and you had contact uh, uh, treaties with the uh, with the an, an incoming government because you were kind of a strong nation initially. You know the the Creeks and Cherokees; those are those were strong strong people, and uh, they made treaties. So all right, so well then you get Andrew uh, Jackson, the president, and he said, you know what, them treaties. Now that you now that we got a lot more people and we got you surrounded. Get your fucking stuff on your back and pack up and go to Oklahoma because we're taking all the land in North Carolina and South Carolina and fuck you. And what can you do if you're the Indian? You can die or you can go to, to Oklahoma. And, and then we sign a deal with... Uh, now there's uh, Osage and... Uh, Dakotas and Blackfeet and there's Apache, there's all kinds of, of peoples who own the land, who lived on the land uh, for thousands of years, but we sign a piece of paper with a guy in, in France, Napoleon, and we say, you know what, we'll give you 12 million dollars, you just give us all this land. Well, yeah, sure, take it. It's not mine to begin Not mine again, well, you know, I don't care. So, Louisiana Purchase. So, what do we do? We say, ah, you know what? Manifest Destiny. You ever heard that? Yeah. Manifest Destiny. That Great is, God gave us the right. This is, we wouldn't be able to just roll over these fucking asshole Indians and take all their land, except if God wants us to. It's Manifest Destiny. You know what? Let's just keep going. When we get all the way to California, let's go ahead and get the Philippines too. Let's just keep going. And you know what? Japan, they want to be, hey, let's go open Japan up to trading. Let's just fucking 19, uh, 1880. Fuck you. We're going to send sh uh, warships into the parties of Japan and say, you know what? You can't be isolationist. We're going to deal. We want you to buy our products. We just think we can do it. We just think that it's okay to take some, because if they're not white guys, these are fucking Muslims or, I don't know, wogs or something like that. So if they want to argue about it, take a bunch of them, chop off their heads, throw their hands and feet and heads in a boat and say, you know, make a fucking soup out of this, you assholes, because we're here. So what, we what, can do you're, it. what you're explaining right now kind of paints a picture in my mind of what I think of kind of Donald Trump. Yeah, absolutely. It, he it, he's I he's from an old school. He I have the right because he has the right, and 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 that's and that's what's got to change in the consciousness. And and it's obviously there's still plenty of people in America who think that we have the right. We're Americans. It's okay. Trump's a, shit. Yes, America first. Fuck everybody else. And if you don't like it. Chop them up and throw them in a boat and let other people eat them because fuck them. We can do it. We're America. That's the attitude that needs to change. And that's. 
you know, it's that change of consciousness. But my point was this, 2,000 years before it gets, I mean, it, the further in time you go back, in history anyway, maybe prehistory might be different, but everybody, once you can write stuff down, it's a pretty much a constant case of might makes right. And not only that, but who's ever in control, um, like if you're in, in Rome 2,000 years ago, well, slavery is okay. Everybody's a slave. And if there was a slave rebellion, which there was more than one of Spartacus, for instance, they, you know, they crucified Christ, but they're not, and they think, oh, that's so bad. Shit. When they had Spartacus's revolution, they lined the road from Rome to Avicenna or some other place. This is uh, it was like 30 miles. 30 miles. Every 10 feet on either side of the road, they put up a cross and they crucified these fucking slaves. I mean, thousands of them, one after another. They lined the road with them. Well, it's better than that today. And then uh, you have the the uh, barbarian, I mean, the the uh, the advance of the uh, of the the decline of the Roman civilization, the clan, and, and the 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 rise uh, of Middle Ages, let's say. But in the Middle Ages, the ones in power, the white guys in power. Um, they're, they're, they control the religion too, so if you step out of line, if you don't, I mean, I, I, I mean it's the, the, the religion is just an arm of the government in this, in this case. If, you, if you're the king, if you're the, the ruler in France or Italy or whatever, you get to appoint bishops and shit like that to the church because it, they're just money, it's just another arm of the of People pay tax to the government and people pay tax to the, and if you don't like it, you can be a heretic, we'll burn you at the cross. We'll line people in the street, the public education, public execu ed execution, real common, uh, real common and real violent too. I mean, they, the, the stuff they did publicly, they, you know, like lay a guy down and have a horse pull his guts out and shit like that and, and public entertainment. That's only 600 years ago, they're still doing that. Just recent past, you know, and then uh, that even though we can say, I mean, this is crazy. Yeah, everybody's equal, but slavery is okay. Well, just a uh, hundred years ago, 150 years ago, it's still all right to own somebody. Well, those weren't considered people. Well, hey, that, <laughs> it, you know, it's, it's, so it's the same. Like women were. Cattle, a cattle. You treat a, mm -hmm. a, a man had rights, but a woman, she's just a possession, uh, and had with no rights. You could beat her, kick her, kill her. It didn't really matter, and and, and that, in fact, so women only got to vote here, and it's a gradual process because worldwide, many women are still fucked. Many women are still that attitude is still around, but it's getting better, and and it. And it goes by a change of consciousness, I think. 500 years ago, nobody could have predicted me sitting here as a, basically nobody. No, I'm not, I'm not rich, I'm not famous, I'm not, I don't have butt, but I'm free and I'm happy. I got everything, I got food, I got, that, that would be a dream beyond like a woman 500 years ago to think that she would have the right to do this. Incomprehensible. You, she, I don't know what she might imagine, but she couldn't imagine being my equal. <laughs> but now she can. And maybe, maybe there is a progression from real shit to shit to not so bad to maybe we're getting okay. I like to think that. You know, we're on a point here. Who, who, who knows? This? But over the long term, things are much better than they ever oh, were. Yeah, the as yeah, a whole, and the whole entire. And the, so, so you don't want to, you know, you can, you can get and think, oh, shit, man, we're just fucked. That's it. There's no way out. And, and but hope don't cost you nothing. And uh, why not? 
Why not? Hope it's a, so for 50 years now, since 1972, every election, every major election, I've written in the name of somebody who I think that if they had the power, when nobody ever does, but if they had, would, was like, this, like, I actually think that for the first of Bernie might have had a chance, sort of, if the Democratic Party had got behind him, he might have been, as a candidate, I think he would have beat Trump. I think he would have, because the groundswell of support, and, and to carry out, because what he was saying was uh, free education and free medical for everybody, to do that, he didn't say, he didn't mention one time cut the, the defense budget. But I can, how, the, how would he handle everything else without doing that? Maybe, maybe we get a leader who says, hey, you know what, we're going to change our foreign policy. If somebody said it, we might do it. Somebody has to say it first, you know. So, uh, yeah. I, I don't, I, my out is I'm going to die in a couple of years. Fuck you guys. Yeah. You know, I'm doing my best, but I can't, uh, I can't you, help you. When you bring things into, into a perspective of the long time span, yeah, things are amazing, actually. And, yeah. And it's just. Never been this good ever. It's never been world. this good. But for the, especially people in America, you see, you're so inundated with news, mostly bad news or negative things that, and, and stuff from all over the world that a hundred years ago or even 60 years ago, you would have never even known about something that was happening in Texas or something right. that was happening in, which is a good and bad thing, but it makes your perception of the, the world and the reality that it's getting worse or it's bad when, in a sense, yeah. it's, thousand times better than it was a thousand years ago for most people and people don't stop to think about we we need a I said we need a change of consciousness we need uh, but is it going to happen I don't think so that doesn't stop me from it, hoping you know it, it happens so slowly that in our in your own lifetime you might see well you know not not really because in your lifetime you've seen at least you know well five or the, six things that are a radical well, change in consciousness that you never would have probably imagined. Oh, absolutely. Happened. When I was when I was born in 1945, at the end of World War II, white guys were still the rule. Uh, women, women wore dresses, and they were uh, sales clerks or bank tellers. And, and if you were colored, we might let you in the military to go shoot people, maybe, but really outside of that, yeah, nothing for you. Nothing for you. <coughs> well, the civil rights movement, that really was a big deal, that's a change of consciousness and that everybody, to first, to, to put it in, in and not everybody's got the idea yet, but to put it in uh, the American ideal that, hey, everybody's equal. And once you say black people are the equal of white people, and, there's, and, then, and that's the way, you answer, well, well, what about women? Because the women's lib movement actually follows the civil rights movement of, Martin, of, of, of people saying, hey, you can't just shout, uh, we hold these truths to be self-evident. Everybody's equal, and then treat me like shit. No, 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 no. Everybody's equal. Let's 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 get this out here on the table. Black people got a right. Mexican people got rights. I don't care what color you are. You got rights, and I don't care what your sex is. You know what? You got that right. Although this has been on the books since 1776, or a hundred years before that, uh, the the Enlightenment begins in in Europe in in Western civilization uh, six hundred years ago now. But once one guy has the idea, it takes a while, five hundred years, to infect the whole society. You might and and really what we what we want to have is this ideal of equality of all, uh, we, everybody with rights to life and liberty, to spread worldwide, to spread worldwide. So, you know, you can, uh, you can believe in uh, the four pillars of uh, Islam and that's fine, 
as long as anybody who don't believe still got their rights, you know? That's cool. You can be a Christian and you can believe that uh, God's telling you what to do as long as you don't push that on other people because he ain't maybe talking to other people. You, uh, The idea that everybody's equal, everybody's got rights to life and liberty, it's out there, but most people haven't accepted that yet. Most people won't. So, a change of consciousness, well, is, is what it takes. It, first, a uh, change of consciousness includes if everybody's equal, then you can't always have more. If everybody's equal, everybody has the same. So, this desire to. And, and is there going to be a change? Because this is built into um, American consumer society. That's what we are. You. If everybody doesn't want more, if everybody doesn't go to the store all the time, if everybody doesn't keep just buying and buying and buying, well, the whole fucking thing's going to collapse. Yeah, actually, the whole thing has to collapse in a way. Instead of wanting more, we should want enough. We should have some... We should have a discussion. It should be on the talk shows. It should be on the... the uh, women's on the view that they put on TV, you know. I said, what... Uh, instead of how many, any time a celebrity comes on and says, well, I have 600 pairs of shoes in my closet. You Shame on you, you fucking bitch. Hey, get out of four pairs and give the rest of that money out to charity or something. Come on. Wanting so much, that's just stupid. Not satisfying. And obviously, if everybody's equal, well, do you think everybody can have 700 pairs of shoes? I mean, is that what, is that, is that even logical? Usually the argument to something like that is, uh, well, if you don't have insanely wealthy people or rich corporations, then how, how are we going to provide jobs? If those people are the ones that are providing the jobs well, to other people. And you, shouldn't, shouldn't they be... Shouldn't we have a 15-hour work week? Shouldn't yeah. the idea be that everybody's employed, but because, you know, 100 years ago or 200 or 500 years ago when everything was slave labor nothing else, and if it got done, it got done by, by hand... That was one thing. If you were rich, who's going to cook your eggs for you, you know? But now, hey, we got microwaves, we got stove, we got... You, you don't have to go out in the field and harvest. You don't... Everybody doesn't have to have summer off so they can go help with the harvest because we got a fucking John Deere machine. One machine harvests the whole damn field and the manufacturer you build a car. Hey, we got a machine. We It's a robotics. The whole thing's done. You don't have to work, so... First, let's think about if we didn't want more all the time, if we weren't trying to just get, 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 uh, well, then what do we do? How do you feel? How, let's say, logically, there's only enough work here for 20 hours a week forever. That's the most you can do. And then, so what, and even then, there's not so, well, we'll say, all right, uh, if you're, old and decrepit, you can't do anything else, then you have to be a school crossing guard. That's what we're going to pay you for. You do that three days a week or whatever. And if you, uh, if if you live in L.A. or, or in, in a tenement in, in New York City, then uh, your job is to care for this floor. Of the, you, you have to make sure that it's, the hallways are painted, that the, the stairway's clean, that there's a light in it, that that's, your 15 hours a week is take care of the place that you live in and and I know that we can make work for everybody to so, have so a little bit of work. So in that situation what the, the government would be paying people? The government what? would be the one handing out salaries? Uh, who you know I never I I, I, I can't never gotten this far before because it, the idea that we weren't that people didn't want more that people didn't want more that they stopped to think about what would it take to get by? Oh, what, what's the minimum that we could do? Then what would we do and how would we fill up the time? Because if you were only working a limited number of hours a week, if you were free, uh, then there, all right, well, we have to encourage people to create. You're, uh, this is your, this is life. Here we are. This is what we get. And we could, deal with it by being a slave and somebody telling us that you got to go over here and that, that's it and you get gruel to eat and nothing else and 
And so, well, uh, that's life, all right? But no, no, we're going to try and make an equitable sharing of, uh, of the fruits of the world. We're going to uh, say uh, first, and if it was equitable, what's reasonable for everybody? What is we? We need that discussion. And, and then how do we support that? How do we make it work? Well, first, what do we need? Mm -hmm. What do we need? What, what's, the, what's the minimum that everybody should have? We're all equal. What's the minimum that everybody should have? And if you have that minimum, should you want more or not? If you have the minimum, then what do you do with your time that's left over? What, what, what will we do? We run out of time here, Bill? Uh, no, yeah. someone's calling me. So. Oh. Uh, the only, so coming up really quickly is, uh, you know, the issue you're talking about is already kind of coming to existence with a lot of robotics and machinery, but sooner than later, there's going to be no jobs. There's, there's going, to be, going to be very, very minimal jobs. And if, if so what do we, we don't do? have a change in consciousness and where people live to work instead of, you know, work to live, then there's going to be a lot of uh, unhappy people that are depressed and, and they have no already, resistance. We already have it a lot. You know, it's a, we, we just, we're, as a conscious, as a society, as a people, generally speaking, we're not thinking about what's really important. We're, we, it, what would it take to be happy? What would it take to be happy? What do we need as a, as a people? What's the minimum that we, that we need? If we have that, then do we have to go into the Middle East and drop bombs or do we, are we, can we work with people instead of trying to control people? Is if we set an example, <coughs> if we, if we, in effect, uh, say we're going to become self-sufficient here in America, we're going to work on what's the least we need to get by and be happy. We're working on being happy. Then it's like uh, to me, like right now, uh, the rest of the world should be trying to emulate. Uh, Denmark or Sweden or in, in Denmark they have the highest uh, you know and they do this deal of who the happiest people in the world okay, everybody the the damn the prince or the king of Denmark uh, he works in a leather shop I think or a blacksmith shop because he likes it mm -hmm. gee that's so fucking cool you know that's what and they they have medical care and they have education for everybody if you're interested i would think that people in america or people in africa or people in asia would be looking at they say hey that's what we want that's cool let's go for that we it's just not um i mean i i watch tv uh uh the, the people People aren't thinking about what what makes them happy. I, it's I just think, not a it's not a debate. I think the change in consciousness, or even people slowing down to think about things like that, can't and doesn't happen because everyone's on this momentum of you work eight or more hours a day. You know, a lot of people think I've got kids and this and that. You barely have an hour to yourself to maybe watch something on the TV or read a book, if that. Usually not, but you're on this momentum of daily life that you don't even have time to stop and think about the reality of the situation or what's to come next. You're just the next day, okay, tomorrow's Tuesday, all right, yeah, I got to drop the kids yeah. up, do this and that. And you get a Saturday and a Sunday where you're running people around doing stuff, you don't even really have time to think in two days. Unless you really have, you know, if there was a 15, 20 hour work week where you had three days, four days off to just relax a little and think about your life and think about the future. Of so much more valuable than wanting more and more and more. That's really cool, yeah. but you know, it's not like you and I can talk about it, I, but.